let's uh, go over these comments. Guy Osment says, let's get real. The mark of the beast is mentioned in Revelation 13, but Revelation 13 was totally fulfilled in the first century. It's already happened. No need to even read the book of Revelation. It was written in vain, and they should have never allowed it to be in the Bible. Therefore, there is nothing in this chapter to see. Just keep moving on. Nothing to see here. Nothing in this chapter that has any direct relevance to the 21st century or beyond. Right. So, don't read it. Don't read your Bible. Don't believe it. Everything's already happened. Just tune into your Netflix and your HBO and your Cinemax and your Showtimes and um, just forget about the Bible. I, I don't agree, uh, Guy Osmond. In fact, that shows an absolute disregard for the Bible and a complete lack of understanding. All right. Um, so the the idea being presented here uh, is that um, yeah, about 70 A.D. Is that right? Yeah, fulfilled in the first century. So about the time that John was writing these, uh, writing this down. All right. So let's go. Let's go to the moment if we can. Oops. To the moment John was writing these down. Alright. Revelation 1, chapter 11, saying, I am the I am Alpha and Omega, first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. Unto Ephesus, Myrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, and Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Can't say any of those. But anyways, so about the time John was writing these down, the probably even before he got to Revelation 13, Revelation 13 was already fulfilled, and he hadn't even had the opportunity to send these to the seven churches in Asia. It's roughly about the same time. About the same time he's writing these down, he's... Uh, this. Uh, the claim is that, well, it's already, it's happening right now, so they probably would have got the message too late. And there was no need to even write this stuff down all we had to do is wait 2,000 years and listen to Guy Osman. Think about that. Is that what you believe? That this Revelation 13 just written in vain? And this is the danger of the preterist view. And also, it's just as equally dangerous to have a futurist view. The futurist view that everything's going to happen in the future and nothing is happening right now. Alright, so let's move on to the next one. <laughs> the, why was my post deleted? The post with the Strong's Concordance. Okay, so I, I don't, I didn't see one. I don't delete. Uh, hold on, I don't delete comments, so let's do this. Maybe it got thrown in here. No, so these, some of these will get automatically held for review if you're posting links to God knows what, uh, like this fella did here, or these fellas. So until I have a chance to look. And, uh, you know, click on the link and then, you know, let the virus do its thing and then I'll check it out. Uh, I'm going to give it time to 
get my credit card information and all that sort of stuff. No, I'm just kidding, but I don't mind you, you sharing links at all, but that's just what happens. All right, and, and I didn't delete. Uh, I didn't delete anything, but if you're not sure, my very strong opinion on the Strong's Concordance, uh, we first see the Strong's Concordance in Genesis 3, and it's not called the Strong's Concordance, it's called the Serpent's Concordance. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Getting Eve to doubt the word of God. And then saying, Well, if you go back to the Greek and the Hebrew, it says, You shall not surely die you know the English says uh, don't eat it let neither touch it or, lest you die and then the serpent says no the, here's the concordance woman it says you shall not surely die if you just read it in the Greek and the Hebrew seriously it's still going on today why would you try to understand the Bible that's written in English by going to a language that nobody is born into. Nobody living today is born into that language. It's not a sacred language. It's not a holy language. There's nothing in the Bible that says, hey, you gotta read the Greek and the Hebrew. That's what the Muslims do. The Muslims say you got in order to understand the Quran, you have to read it in Arabic. It doesn't matter what it says in English, you cannot understand it. It is impossible to understand the Quran in any other language other than the Arabic Ara, Arabic or Arabic, whatever. I mean, come on, man. So I can't know. I look when I was in school, I took German class. My last name, Henning, is a German name. I took German class to learn the German language. I got 9%, man. I had no idea. No idea how to say that language, how to speak it, how to spell it, nothing. Completely lost. And now, and German's being spoken today. Now you're telling me I have to go, go learn another language that's ten times harder than German and that nobody in the world today is born into. I got no shot, man. I got no I got no shot at German. I got even lesser of a shot of learning Hebrew. No, no, no. Are you telling me that God is just too pathetic to speak English what kind of God do you worship that is not able to speak English you are out of your cotton picking mind you believe God can resurrect the dead perform all these miracles but God just can't speak English so you gotta go to a language with nobody speaks nobody's born into it I should say nobody's born into people pretend to speak it I don't doubt that at all I wouldn't have any idea if they were speaking Chinese Hebrew Greek or what have you I don't understand none of it and I believe in a God that speaks in all languages for all time forever and ever in all these languages that are spoken today they're gonna pass away one day there's going to be a time when none of them are being spoken. Not Greek, not Hebrew, not English, not Chinese. None of them. And I got evidence to support that. You don't have any evidence at all to support this idea that you have to go to a foreign language that nobody's born into. There's, it's not in the Bible. In fact, I could show you a verse that is de uh, directly contrary to that idea. 
But Zephaniah 3, verse 9, speaking of the resurrection, in the resurrection, for then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. And of course, Paul even points this out that languages, I mean, just use common sense, man. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. So and that's what happened in Genesis, in Genesis 11. God confounded the language. So the original language is no longer being spoken, and Hebrew is not the original language. Come on. All right. Now, here, with men, in the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. And I'm not kidding you. I, I've shared this with a lot of people, and it just goes right through them. They, it's like they're blind to it. It's like they don't get it. They don't see it. They don't get it. And it's as plain as day, but they just don't want to believe it because they have this confirmation bias. They have this worldview that they have to. Um, they have to. People have to depend on them to. To know what God says. They want to be like superiors. I'm your superior. I'm going to tell you what God really said. Well that's the same thing the serpent's doing. The same thing. That's what. So that's why I don't call it a Strong's Concordance. I call it the Serpent's Concordance. What, how about this? Think about. How about this idea? How about reading the Bible that you hold in your hands. And believing it's from God. Huh? What an idea that is. Well, that's what I believe. And so, you know, I'm not sure if your if your post that got deleted somehow. I don't know why that would have happened. I'm not sure if you're pro or, or against. I'm just sharing my views on the serpent's concordance. Okay, here we go. Roderick. Still not sure what a preterist is. John's vision was before the soon destruction in 70 AD. So it's really, <clears throat> it's really irrelevant. Um, about you know about the time John was being shown these visions and being told to take these to write this down and to take it to the seven churches. About that time, everything that he was writing down was already fulfilled. So he did all that in vain. And so just don't even bother reading the Bible. You know, just pay attention to your CNN and your Fox News and your MS, NBC and your CBS and ABC. Just watch the news and be happy. Nothing to see in the Bible. Come on, man. It... it, it, it this is look it, when it comes to politics you got left screaming you got the right screaming and people think that if they scream loud enough and long enough they'll get heard but I'm telling you it's not gonna change the truth and what are you trying to do are you trying to persuade people to believe something and then once you get everybody on your side it's gonna be the truth that's that's what they do on politics in politics right they scream it loud enough and long enough oh they think they'll be heard oh, I don't know what the verse is Romans 3 verse 4 God forbid yeah let God be true but every man a liar so it doesn't matter if every man on earth believed that Revelation was written in vain, that John was just some drugged out hippie, and it, if everybody in the world believed it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change the truth. And there's no way in hell that Jesus came to John, showed these visions by angels, and 
told him to write it down and to share it with the seven churches. Meanwhile, all this is already being fulfilled. There's no way. No way. And that's just a lazy way of looking at the scripture. It's just like, eh, just pass it. It's like people that say, oh, the book of Matthew isn't written to you. It's written to people people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, there's no reason at all to read the book of Matthew. It's the same thing, man. People are telling you, don't read the Bible. Don't read Matthew. That's not for you. Don't read Revelation. It's already passed. Don't read any of the Bibles. And don't believe any of it. Because you got to learn Greek and Hebrew. I'm telling you, guys, we're under attack and you're swallowing up what the enemy is selling come on man you gotta put the truth before even your own self if you want any understanding if you desire the truth if you desire wisdom and understanding then put all those things before your own self uh, John's vision was before the soon destruction in 70 AD where many, <laughs> 144,000 were saved from destruction. Uh, again, that's not, that's not in the Bible. Then after that, there are, were martyrs over the ages. And yes, Rome, to be part of them and do business, you had to take a mark or oath. All right, so we're... Now we've crossed the line from don't read the Bible to way over, even further, into this fairy tale fantasy zombie world that's already come and went. The zombies already came. And, uh, also, I perceive the whore of Babylon was commonly known as the Queen of Heaven in Old Testament. So, what? saying that the whore of Babylon is now before baby Jesus so just so you might know the whore of Babylon in the book of Revelation is the beast of Revelation and the beast of Revelation is the fourth beast of Daniel and the first beast of Daniel is the Babylonian kingdom all right so all these beasts leading up to the fourth beast which we read about in the book of Revelation they are all in the same spirit now the Queen of Heaven uh, um, is not the same but uh, you could I guess you could argue let's see I guess you could argue it's in the same spirit couldn't you? Let's see. What about five mentions? Ooh. All right. So I do. I do think that uh, it's not unfair to say that they are in the same spirit. Okay. But you know, all these are in Jeremiah and. You know, Jeremiah's in the Old Testament, and I'm just, I don't think there's a necessity to make that connection. If you want to make a strong case, you then show me that you know a little bit about this other stuff, okay? I don't, there's not, let me put it this way, I don't know how to, how I would teach the connection. I don't know why I would even bother to teach the connection between the Queen of Heaven and the Whore of Babylon. All right, so uh, I've heard uh, I've heard people teach or talk about the Queen of Heaven, but I don't see any relevance, and I don't see the connection. Maybe I'm wrong. Show me that I'm wrong, okay? But if you're gonna show me I'm wrong, then get this other stuff right. I'm not seeing any connection. That's all. Indirect connection? Possibly, I guess. 
I guess you could spin it in a certain way. But uh, they were in the Old Testament and during this time, there were people that were worshiping false gods. There's no question about it. But to say that same false god, I guess you could say it's in spirit, but it, there's no direct connection, uh, in my opinion. There's no, because this is the only time it's mentioned, is in the book of Jeremiah. All right, so I think people are making too much out of that and not making enough out of what's actually written in the book of Revelation. So anyway, similar system, different time, and it's how God saw the political church system. Now, if it is all to happen as you stated, then that would make the self-proclaimed chosen state Israel legit. Therefore, we have much studying to do. Okay, so... Uh, no, I, I don't know where you, you just threw that out of nowhere. The 1948 Israel is not the Old Testament Israel, and nor is it the New Testament Israel, and nor is it the Israel to at it, at any time. It's not the new city of God, and that's ridiculous. But I mean, that's what people teach. They teach that because there's a land that's called Israel. And the people have dark hair and a big nose. That these are the chosen people of God. And they don't need to believe in Jesus Christ. That sounds crazy. But that's what people teach. They're teaching that they don't need Jesus. And people are saved just because of their flesh. And it's stupid. But that's what people teach. They say you can believe if you're not born a Jew then you have to believe in Jesus Christ that's what they teach it's insanity there's only one way to everlasting life and it's through Jesus Christ and just in case you are confused about this let's let me show you something that perhaps uh, you're not fully aware of maybe I don't know but the promise was to Abraham and his seed the promise of everlasting life and here in Galatians it, it this should clear it up now to Abraham and a seed where the promise was made he saith not and to seeds as of many you know in other words it's not all these people born in 1948 Israel with dark hair and a big nose no that's not what he's saying at all that's not what the promise was to the promise was to Abraham and a seed he saith not into seeds as of many, but as of one, into thy seed, which is Christ. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed, an heir according to the promise. That was that was in the same verse. I just didn't it's like what, ten verses down? Oh, it's at the very bottom. I forget. See, that's why I need to keep reading the Bible. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. Right there, 13 verses down. Okay. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So the promise of everlasting life was to Abraham and a seed, which is Christ. Alright, so it has nothing at all to do with being born in 1948 Israel in that land and it doesn't you're not gonna be saved because your mom was a Jew. Hey, that's not the way to everlasting. That's what they teach, man. It's crazy, but that's what they teach and in fact uh, the way the world is set up, uh, I'm surprised out you know what? I'm surprised you're. I'm even allowed to say that. Really, I, I think there's a law against saying that you're that um, people of you know of 1948 Israel. Um, I think there's a law that says you, you can't speak against them. They call it anti-Semitism, hate speech. 
that sort of thing. Uh, but that's exactly what the Bible says. So the Bible has officially become hate speech. You think about this. It's not only speaking against Jews, saying that they are of the synagogue of Satan, but it also speaks against homosexuality. It's wrong to have, you know, homosexual relations. That's wrong. That's bigotry. All right. And um, I'm pretty sure that can get you in a lot of trouble as well. So the Bible is pretty much illegal anymore. And so we'll see if they come and arrest me. They might. All right, so anyways, clarify your thoughts there, Roderick. I appreciate them, but let's see. Revelation 25, verse 6 does speak of millennial reign, but isn't what many think. Did I read this already? I must have. I must have. Okay, so those events seem to have happened. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I did read that yesterday. So, again, think about this. About the time... John was writing these down because first of all he was he was shown or first of all uh, excuse me so let me let me do it this way John who wrote the book of Revelation is the same John of the fourth gospel you got Matthew Mark Luke and John John is also the fella that wrote first John second John and third John all right and John is also um, he also wrote this one it's also my last names or my middle name excuse me so um, John uh, was with Jesus when we when we read Matthew Mark Luke and John these are eyewitness accounts of the life and times of Jesus so they given a, a record of his life and everything that happened okay and then it was after this after Jesus ascended he came back and the angels showed John these visions the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him right to show unto his servants things was which must shortly come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto her his ser his servant John so this is to show his servants which are those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ all right it's not um, you know a couple of people 2,000 years ago or what have you so you got to figure, um, if about 33 A.D., Anno Domini, the 33rd year of our Lord Jesus Christ, he died, defeated death, rose from death into life, and then ascended to heaven with the promise that he would return for us. This happened about 33 A.D. And then afterwards is when John was shown these visions okay so <laughs> you gotta figure what maybe maybe it was 40 AD all right? and then John was shown so he had 30 years to go out there and show uh, or to uh, share uh, this with the seven churches so that that would be my guess maybe 30 35 AD to 40 AD he was showing these visions give or take you know whatever and I, I mean let's just say it was the same year just later on 33 AD so he's shown these visions told to write them down and then he went out and shared them with the seven churches let's say that only took a year to do that so 34 AD now you're saying 36 years later that those writings became vain now they would have got out now to the churches but what what's the point of that why even write that down and confuse everybody for thousands of years 
makes no sense whatsoever. One reason why people say Revelation 13 is already fulfilled it's so it's because they don't want you to read it they don't want you to read revelation 13 they don't want you to read matthew they don't want you to read the bible and if you do read the bible you can't believe it because you got to go to the greek and the hebrew you got to go to the originals which don't exist you just forget it it's it's there's nothing there just forget the whole thing watch your hbo your cnn and just don't worry about it. You'll be okay. You're going to die soon anyway, right? I mean, come on. Come on, man. There's no life in that at all. There's no hope. There's no joy. There's no excitement, no enthusiasm, man. We have it, the most incredible book the world has ever seen. It's the Holy Bible, and it comes from God, and everything in it is true. And we can take these things, especially that in Revelation 13, and a Look at what's going on in Revelation 13 and see it happening around us. It's happening right now. If any man has an ear, let him hear. All right. If you're going to hear, you got to have faith. And you got to believe. 